Hello guys, welcome to another session. In this session, what we are going to do, we are going to learn about the basic building block of any programming language. So that means we are going to discuss about the common elements which we use in all the programming language. Some of you must be having a question that why I am teaching all this and why I am not coming to the point directly, why I am not starting teaching Python. The reason behind it is that I want that whatever the time you spent you can use it or say you can use the knowledge in learning the other programming language in future and these knowledge are not only applicable to python these knowledge you can apply in any of the programming languages so without wasting time let's jump into the discussion and then we will proceed so let's look into the overall picture so this is what we are having the elements within the program suppose that if we are designing any program these elements comes into picture I have given only the limited set of information which is applied to any of the programming language. I haven't covered the advanced uh, blocks like classes and all because I don't want to confuse you. I want that you can get all those information on a step by step manner and later point of course you will get the complete picture. So any program which is made up of following components which contains a variable I will discuss one by one which contains flow control for decisions, which contains loops, which contains some keywords of that language, which contains some operator to perform some actions on the given number or any string or array. So there is certain data types we need to remember that some of the data type data type is nothing but a representation of a particular data within computer programming. So now we will also look into characters how do any programming language use characters once we are comfortable with all this thing we will look into arrays also it is a collection type then we will look into some special collection type that is a string which is an array of characters and once it is being done there is some typo error sorry for that and then we will look into the functions so how do you organize all this within a program with the help of functions so these are some of the basic building block of programming so before jumping into any of the discussion on all these elements I wanted to show you one of the picture which I have drawn so here I wanted to show you the hierarchy of the memory so whenever you design a program and you want to run it so it will run from in any of this location depend upon the size of the program and what kind of operation we are going to perform for a time being just consider that these type of memory exist within the computers if you look into the hierarchy you find that it has various types of memory like register cache main memory ram hard disk magnetic tape and these memory can be used to hold the information about the executing program so for a time being you just consider that there is a memory block which contains the information about the executing program so let's jump into the discussion which we left earlier so in this we will understand that what is variables variable is nothing but a name of the memory location which holds the data so let's understand with an example so let's jump into the terminal right now you don't bother about how this terminal came I will let you know when we start the part 2 so here we are having for example a variable a and now I print a it will give me value 10 because I have stored this information same way if I write a equal to 20 it will give me value 20 so where this information is storing so it is storing in one of the memory block so just consider that a is a name of that location and whenever I am calling a so it is returning me the value so now let's look into the another element so jump into the diagram so here we will look into keywords so what actually keywords is basically every programming language should have some reserved keywords so we should not use for any of the variable definition so what it means so considering an example which I am going to demonstrate now suppose if you are writing we have written that a equal to 10 so it is allowed but if we try to write if equal to 10 it will give me error why because we can't use keyword as a variable so every programming language should have reserved keywords so make sure that you know those keywords 
for python i will let you know what are those keywords are so whenever you are defining any variable you can't use that keywords so far so good we made a good progress now understand that another element one more thing which i wanted to let you know that this shell if you are confused about what this cell is don't get confused i will let you know in the part 2 of the section what actually it is and how it is coming so when we do the setup installation of python using anaconda then you will get this option to run the program i am using it because i wanted to give you a practical perspective of the programming language so that when you start writing it you feel comfortable that if you are getting such an error then you will not get confused one tip i wanted to give you over here that you get a practice of seeing all these syntax error and other kind of error because in a programmer's life these are the things which comes on a daily basis so get used to it you can understand that how you are going to deal with this syntax error if it is coming i will let you know all those steps whenever you are getting such error how to debug it how to look into the code and how to rectify those code so get a practice of it if it is coming it is good the sooner you get this error sooner you will learn the thing so now let's jump into the diagram so another element is flow control flow control is just nothing but a conditional statement within a program so let's look into example what i mean to say suppose that we have already defined a equal to 10 this is the variable we have defined if you print it it is coming 10 now suppose if you want to check that whether this value is 10 or not so we need a decision and we can apply those decision in python or any of the language there is a certain block called if block the syntax syntax wise it is very different but it do the same thing in each of the programming language to check the conditional statements so for example in python what we will do i just wanted to show you double equal to these operators i will let you know when we go into part 2 for considering that it is a operator we use to check the value and if you are writing a equal to 10 and then here we are telling that print yes it is 10 so what will happen over here and you will run it then it will print yes it is 10 why because our value is 10 so just take an example now another example if we put a value a equal to a equal to 20 and now we will run it again to do that we are defining over here a equal to 10 and here we are printing print yes and then we have a else block so this is a part of if block decision flow control so it is part of flow control enter and then you can write print no so it will check that whether the value of a is 10 or not so it will print no so it print no why because we have check use the flow control and then we print it as per the conditions so now let's jump into the another element of programming language so we will be seeing here loops so loops is another one of the mostly used or one of the most important element of a program and each programming must have or say each programming has loops which we can use for iteration but prior to learning loops i wanted to give you a concept about arrays because we are going to iterate these arrays with the help of loops so i wanted to give you understanding about arrays so let's look into arrays so array is nothing but a collection object this thing also exist in each of the programming language which is already existing and this must stay whenever a new programming language comes into the market because all are these thing are basic building block of programs so let's jump into the terminal so here suppose if you are defining a equal to 3 8 1 some values like this so here we are storing the collections of all these numbers so that means a single variable we are using to storing this collection so now if you want to access this if you write a and enter then it will return the entire collections but if you want to access a particular element then you need to access the indices i will explain you in more detail 
first let's see this example if i want to access 3 i need to specify a equal to 0 as memory allocation or the indices starts with 0 so here it is returning me 3 so now let's look into this diagram so basically this is an array and collection of uh, numbers so what we are doing the actual value is being stored in a contiguous location an array contains the information in a contiguous location and when you try to access it then it is returning the complete set but if you want to access a particular indices a particular value then we need to access it with the indices so in short array is nothing but a collection of object and value is stored in contiguous memory locations if we want to access complete array then we can directly call the variable name of array and if we want to access a particular element then we need to pass the indices and indices always start with zero so this is what an array is but if you have any doubts you can contact me in my twitter handle i can give you the reference material if you want a further explanation or further information on this you can write me on a twitter handle with the course name along with your questions so i will respond and my twitter handle is this cloud pragati so this is my twitter handle you can send your question along with the course name and i will respond it whenever i see the message so moving further so now let's look into the loops so to understand it better we will jump into terminal and we will look by example if you remember that we have declared an array variable and which contains 3 8 1 and if you print so it is printing all the value but i want to access all the element one by one so i have two options either i can go there call the indices and enter i get the first element then i type one then i get second element then i type then i type here two the indices so but it is very very drud geary task that means it is very laborious and nobody will write like this if somebody want to access each element so here loops comes into picture if we will use it so how do we can use it i will let you know i have given a detailed information about loops in our python part 2 section but i for example purpose i am showing over here don't bother about the syntax now just see that what is the purpose of loop that i wanted to demonstrate that so here i have created this is a loop how we are defining a loop this is called for loop and within that I am finding I am using a inbuilt function of Python which is checking the length of this array that means how many element it has and then it is iterating on each of the indices so irrespective of if it is three elements or if it is more than three element or uh, so many elements you can iterate it it will give you the result so let's look into that so now it has given all the element by accessing those indices so this is one of the basic use of loops so this is what i wanted to demonstrate about loops so let's move further and look into other thing other element we wanted to look into that the numbers so numbers is nothing but representation of the data within the program so for example if you go there and if you're writing b equal to 10 so that means it is storing numbers so there is nothing much to discuss about numbers so just consider that it is a kind of a data type within a program which represent what kind of data it is so let's look into other topic so here characters characters doing the same thing but a character values so let's look into that so here if i am storing c equal to d so that means this c is storing a character d if you print so it will return d so it is nothing but uh, again a way to store the data of type character one more thing which i wanted to point it out if any of you is not understanding about all this concept that's perfectly fine because our journey is just started so i request you don't leave the course in between because learning a program is a process which might take one or two months but that is fine if you are spending much time initially then that will help later point of time in our career so now moving further so 
strings i will discuss in second part of the course because there are so many things within the string which i wanted to let you know and it is one of the mostly used collection type within python or any of the languages same with functions i don't want to confuse more with all this thing and i don't want to overload you with all this concept in a single video i want that you should learn step by step so i kept this topic later point of time so that once we will practice as number of as programs then we will go into function so that you can think about what actually functions is and how we are going to use functions and why we are using the functions so that's it guys this is what i wanted to demonstrate you in this lab i hope i have given a holistic view about the elements of the program and if in case if you are not understanding anything just let me know your question on my twitter handle which is at cloud pragati with the course name i will respond to you once i get time okay guys thank you bye bye see you in the next session